the movement. It's a seagull movement which hacks and hand winds and is quite nicely decorated with the, the gold tone on the bridges and the rotor and the bluing on the screws. They haven't gone over the top with the direct decoration but it's, uh, it's really pleasant to look at and that's a very very nice exhibition case back with nice deep engraving on it. You've got the model number 8053G. That's C8053G. Five atmosphere water resistant. Cadison with the Cadison logo. And automatic when sapphire crystal. So, quite a mouthful, but I actually like text on watches. Uh, I don't really like things to be sterile, so I think that looks really classy. It's very, very good. Very, very good for the money. The dial of the watch. Now, this is the example with the blue dial. And I think that blue dial is just beautiful. It's a lovely shade of blue, a lovely blue tone. And the sunburst is quite spectacular. The lettering on the dial is not particularly distinct when you're outdoors because that flat sapphire crystal is quite reflective and could be doing with some anti-reflective coating on it. However, the dial and handset are really, really pretty. But, uh, we'll come on to it later, the hands, as you can see, are very slim which I don't think is a bad thing. I think it looks quite elegant. But there isn't an awful lot of loom there on the hands. And that has consequences that we'll be able to see when I'm showing you the faults with the, with the, the watch. The crown there is not a screw-in crown. The watch hand winds and feels nice when you wind it. Not gritty and sandpapery as uh, some do. But it is only a push-pull crown with the in position, the winding position. First position when you pull it out is the date change. And the time change is when the crown is fully extended. So they're only claiming... 50 metres of water resistance here and the fact it doesn't have a screw in crown is probably a contributory factor to that but I'm not complaining and the the battens are all properly aligned and nicely fixed to the dial so, there's nothing wrong with the finishing there. The fluting on the bezel is really nicely polished and machined, catches the light beautifully. No complaints there. It is a slightly thinner bezel than you see on the larger Pagani. But I don't think the appearance of the watch suffers for that at all. Looking here at the concealed butterfly or deployant clasp. See the buttons to act activate it. Very nicely decorated. Nicely machined and polished apart from that area across the middle there that uh, has the nice machine decoration. This is a really good plus point on the watch because... Wearing it and sticking my hand in and out of pockets, I didn't have any accidental deployments of the clasp. So this is a really well executed clasp on the watch. Top marks to Cadison for this one. The bracelet 
is nicely executed, all solid links, no sharp edges, very comfortable in wearing and it has, and you can see there, split pins for adjustment. Screws, I always prefer screws, they're nicer, but the split pins work perfectly well and I was able to adjust the bracelet without any issues at all. So this is a win as well. Couple of the links with a slight stiffness, which is not apparent when it's on your wrist, but I'm sure that will ease off. In fact, Jubilee bracelets traditionally ease off a little bit too much, so I anticipate this will be no different to a Rolex original. But well, maybe since the, the links are steel rather than gold, it won't be such a problem. Anyway, bracelet, big win. The biggest issue that I found with the watch is, as quite often happens with Chinese homages, sharp bits. Usually these are on the bracelet, but in this instance, the bracelet is fabulously good. The problem here is in the corner of the lugs. That line there, to be specific, all four of them. This bit is very, very, very sharp. Now, you won't notice this while you're wearing the watch on the bracelet. I sort of came across it accidentally while brushing my fingers across the watch. If you see on the end of the lugs there, there has been some attempt to bevel off the corner. I think probably what we had was very, very sharp points and that was identified and addressed by that little bit of machining there, which is on all four lugs. But what hasn't been addressed is the edge there. It's a very, very, very sharp line. You could, you could chisel wood with it. Now, I like to mix and match my watches. Now, I'm probably going to keep this one on the Jubilee because this is actually my first Jubilee bracelet and I think it's absolutely wonderful. But at some stage, I'm going to put this watch on a leather strap and this will then become an issue. It's not so bad inside the watch. The, the, the underside of the lugs don't seem to be as badly affected. Although I'm sure without the bracelet being there, that would be an issue as well. This watch has uh, had some criticism of the magnification available with the Cyclops. Now you can see there that it does actually magnify, although perhaps not as much as we would like. It is however functional. Less functional however is the loom. Remember I mentioned those slim hands? Well this is how it lights up after being in the sunshine and very shortly afterwards, less than a minute, this is what it looks like. On those battens isn't too bad, but with the hands vanishing so quickly, it's a bit of a moot point. Now, flat crystals are very reflective. There's no getting away from that. And unfortunately, when you're getting a watch for less than $100 with a sapphire crystal, you don't usually get AR coating, and this is no exception. I'm a bit precious about this, but you do have to roll your wrist to see it properly. The biggest plus with this watch is how beautiful it is. Look at that lovely sparkly wrist roll in the sunshine. As usual, I have to leave you to make your own mind up about this. I don't get paid by Cadison or anybody else to sell their watches. My view is, despite the few faults I've found, I'd be quite happy to order an American Cycle. And I'm seriously thinking about doing just that.